Hi, welcome to Mwalimu Plus Live Classes. Remember, this is the only platform where we give you the key to unlocking your potential. This is also the platform where we actually break down information for you to understand. My name is Peter Muguche. Welcome to class seven, mathematics. Previously, we had been talking about money and what exactly were we talking about in the topic money? We were talking about commission and percentage commission. We looked at the word commission and realized that this is the amount of money that one is paid having done and accomplished a task. We also looked at percentage commission as that fraction of the commission, that fraction of the commission converted to a percentage. Now, at the end of the lesson, I left one question for you to attempt and I think that is what we need to look at first before we continue. And the question read, Cecilia, a salesperson, is given 5% commission on all the clothes she sells in her shop. Now, how much commission does she get if in the month of January she sold clothes worth 950,000 shillings? That is what you call sales. She made a total sales of 950,000 shillings from the clothes. Now, this is what you are expected to do. First of all, very important diagrams over there that are showing us, you know, this girl called Cecilia trying to make what we call a sale. To make a sale is to exchange the services of, I give you the cloth, you give me the money. That's exactly what they are doing there. And the commission that she was offered was actually 5%. And the total sales that she made from all the clothes we've seen is 950,000 shillings. That is where we start. Then moving on, we uh, should understand that commission Commission is actually 5% of the total sales. So what do we do with this 5% commission? We convert that percentage into a fraction. And of course, you know what we mean by percent. Percent means out of 100. So I'm going to take 5 out of 100 and then I multiply by the sales made. And that is 5 out of 100 times 950,000 shillings. Once you've written it that way, the next step is to simplify. And this is how you do the simplification. So, having written it that way, now, try to see how many times will numbers in the denominator divide into the numbers in the numerators. So, 100 will divide once. And that will give you one. Then the same 100 will divide into 950,000. Uh, 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 nine, that is 9,500 times. Now, what is left? Five times 9,500. Now, multiply these two numbers and they will give you the total amount of commission that... Cecilia got and this is 47,500 shillings. That is the commission she received from making all those sales of clothes. Now that now brings us to our next subtopic and topic. Topic being money and the subtopic now is simple interest you realize that they do not have uh, you know, some, you know, some greater links, but at least we are still talking about money. So for our introduction, what do we have? Now, simple interest is the term that we need to understand here. 
simple interest. So simple, simple interest is the money paid for money borrowed or money deposited in a bank. I go again. Simple interest. For you to get simple interest, then it is the amount of money that you are going to gain. You are going to gain this money if you invest or put money in the bank or the money you are going to pay the bank if you borrowed from the same same bank. That is simple interest. So two-way traffic. You borrow, you pay interest. You uh, put money in the bank, then you earn interest. And that is what you call simple interest. I don't want to move to the next level before I just show you a, a picture of people at the bank. Probably some of them trying to borrow, some of them trying to put money in the bank. That's exactly what you're seeing in that diagram. So I had to move you on and then we look at some of the commonly used terms in simple interest and any other terms that are related to it. And the first term that we want to look at is simple interest itself. Do you remember what I actually a minute ago said? I say that simple interest is the amount of money that you earn if you, uh, bo uh, you, you deposit money in the bank or the amount of money you, uh, you give to the bank if you borrowed money from there. Then the next term is principal. Grammatically, the word principal will have two meanings. Of course, the first one being the highest person in any institutions. Say, for example, a school. You have a principal there. Or actually at, you know, uh, at a, a family level, that highest person is called the principal. But then, in this context, we are going to look at it from the context of money. And now, principal from this other context is the amount of money that you either borrow from a bank or the amount of money you put into the bank for you to earn interest or for the bank to earn some interest from that amount of money they give you. Then the next word is time. Now, how does time come here? Remember when you put some money in the bank, this money will stay in the bank for a period of time. That period of time that money lasts in the bank or in the bank account is what we call time. So it's period. Now, the last term that I want to bring into this context is actually rate percent. Rate percent. Remember, you put money in the bank, then they will not just give you an interest. They have to calculate how much will a certain amount of money earn you some interest and for how long. And that is what we call rate. The rate at which your money that you put in the bank will earn interest. Or the rate at which the money you borrow from the bank earns interest from you. And that one is, uh, is put in a symbol rate, R percent. Now, having looked at the terms and having seen the definitions of these terms, I believe now you have an idea of what we call sim simple interest and some of the terms that are linked to it. And therefore, I now bring you to the formula for calculating the simple interest. And here is the formula. For you to calculate simple interest, then you need to take the principal, then you multiply by the rate percent. That rate percent, you still go ahead to multiply by the period of time that that money lasts in the bank. So in simple terms, it is simple interest equals to principal.
principal times rate percent times time. You can abbreviate that in this form. Simple interest equal or SI equals to P, which stands for principal, times R out of 100, which is rate percent, times the time that the money lasts in the bank. Now I think you have the formula. And you're going to use this formula every time you want to calculate about simple interest. Let's move on. Now, the terms that I was talking about, the letters, the P, that was principal, the R, that was rate, and the T, that was time, is actually time in years in months. So I want to let you know that sometimes it can be time in years or simply time in months. Then rate would be simply a percentage that is given by the bank. Then the principal is actually the amount that should be given in shillings. Now, moving on, having taken you through all this as part of the introduction, I want us to try out a question. And this question is a sample question. And the question reads, fill in the table that you are seeing over there to show interest earned on money borrowed from a bank. This time round, it's all about we borrowing money from the bank. So we want to find out how much interest are we going to pay to the bank if we borrowed various amounts of money from the bank. So how much interest was paid in each case? We start by looking at the table itself. We have about four columns of the table and the first column actually contains the amount that is the principal amount in shillings. Then the next column has rate per annum. The rate that is the percentage rate per annum. And what I mean by per annum, usually abbreviated as PA, is per year. Every year, that percentage that you're seeing there is given in each case. Then time is the next column that has different times which this money stays in the bank or this money stays with us when we borrow. And then finally, we have now the simple interest. The first one has been done for you. However, I would want to take you through on how the first one was done for you. So if you're ready, let's begin. Here we go. First of all, the formula. Formula, we have already seen it. It is SI, which is simple interest, equals to principal times rate out of 100 times the time given. The time can be in months or simply full years. And then you want to look at the first one uh, that I talked about. And the principal amount that was given was 1,000 shillings at the rate of 10% per annum. And then this money stayed in the bank for three months. Now, there's something that I want you to pause and look at, first of all. Look at the time. The time is given in months. Three months. Now, three months is not a full year. It's just a section or a fraction of the year. So we're going to write the number of months out of what we expect in a year. A year has 12 months. And because we are talking about per annum, and the three months do not make it to one full year, then we are going to calculate that fraction of the year that the money stayed with us. So, in simple terms, SI, that is simple interest, equals to that 1,000 shillings, multiplied by 10 out of 100, then you multiply by three months out of 12. Once you've done that, the next step is to simplify. So, let's simplify this out. We are going to look at the numbers carefully. Remember, in the, in the numerators, we have 1,000 multiplied by 10, multiplied by 3. Then, in the denominator, we have 100 multiplied by 12. And here, we have to be very careful because 
the simplification has to go with the numbers that can divide into each other. So I'm going to begin with the zeros. So the first thing I do is to eliminate the zeros and of course in the denominator I have a hundred. So the two zeros should be cancelled from a ten and from the one thousand so that we remain with now only a thousand. Now once you have that, you move to the next cancellation. Then you check. Cancel twelve and and three, and that will give you one out of four. Now in the numerator, at the numerator we have, uh, we have a, a, a hundred, then in the denominator we have a four. So this four will cancel out with a hundred to give you 25. And finally, what do you have? Just a 25 multiplied by one out of, of course, one. And how much is that? 25 shillings. That is how the first interest was got. So let's move on to look at B and C respectively. Now, here we go. The formula for calculating the next amount, principal amount, uh, which was 25,000, should be the same, same formula, SI equals to principal times rate out of 100 times time. And we replace it very quickly these letters or symbols with the amount that we have and the rates and of course the time. So this one is very simple because we are only talking about one year and we are going to change this one year into months. So we say 25,000 shillings times just that rate of 12 out of 100, then you multiply by one year. And that only now leaves us to do the cancellation. And the cancellation now comes here. Very simple. Just cancel the zeros that you have in the denominator with the zeros we have in the 25,000 shillings. And that leaves you with 250 multiplied by 12. So 250 shillings multiplied by 12 is simply what I'm waiting for you to calculate. And in one, two, three seconds, I know you're very quick at multiplication, and here is the answer. If you multiply that number, you'll get 3,000 shillings. That should be the interest that we were looking for. So we've done the second one, now move to the third one, and the last in that table. And here, we still use the same formula, without changing it because we are still looking for the simple interest. So replace those letters with the amounts. 75,000 shillings was the amount, that is the principal amount, multiplied by the rate that was 15% and that therefore 15 out of 100 multiplied by the number of months was actually 18 months. So 18 months because we've gone beyond one year, we're going to write 18 out of 12. The number of months out of the year. And that will only leave us with the cancellation. So we move on to cancel out and see what happens. So just cancel the zeros first of all. And that will leave you with 750 multiplied by 15 by 18 out of 12. And then cancel 12 by 18. That will give you a fraction. That's an improper fraction of 3 out of Two, and from there, you can now multiply whatever is left because no more cancellation will continue without getting a remainder. So multiply 750 by 15 by 3 and then remember to divide by 2 and that will give you 3,375 which when divided by 2 will give us this amount. 1,687 shillings and 50 cents. 1,687 and 50 cents. That becomes the last interest that we got after depositing 75,000 shillings. Now, the example question that I have brought here should help you to work out at least one sum. And the question is, a self-help group borrowed 840,000 shillings from a bank for a construction project. If the bank charged interest rates at 10% per annum, 
how much money did the group pay back after a period of two years. The diagram actually shows you what is going on. This self-help group is borrowing money from that bank. Now, this is what you are supposed to do. First of all, identify the activities that are going on at the bank. So the amount that was borrowed was 840,000 shillings. Interest charged was 10%. And the period this money was borrowed was two years. Now, this now takes us to the next level, which is actually working out using the formula. So take your 840,000 uh, 840, shillings, multiply by 10 out of 100, multiply by 2. This becomes so simple. Cancel the zeros, and that leaves you with 8,400 multiplied by 10, then by 2 years. And what did you get? 168,000 shillings was the amount of interest they were supposed to return. You see? Very simple. So, using the formula and understanding what simple interest is, is very, very important. And of course, the terms that are used. And now, I want to leave you this question for your, uh, your, your trials. You just try and relate with what you've learned. And it is, Mogusu deposited 50,000 shillings in a financial institution that offered 14% interest per annum. Now, he withdrew interest after three and a half years. How much interest was this? So, work out that. And when we meet in the next lesson, I'm very sure you're going to see how it was supposed to be done. As for now, it is bye-bye.